All right, guys. So I've already recorded this once and then found out my mic volume for some reason was turned all the way down. I don't know why. I never do that. But anyway, let me just go ahead and start and I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible. Get it out of the way. First off, you'll notice that we can pick up slot actors now and he only uh, spawns now with the pistol and slot on his right side. And I did that so that you could test this out for yourself and see how it works yourself. And also there was a uh, bug where, let's say you had uh, some pistols in your hand and it, it doesn't really matter, it happened to all of the, in pretty much all situations. But if you have a, an item in your hand and you go to traverse, it puts it away and then it pulls it back out. But there was a bug where after you would uh, uh, walk away if you would put your weapons up and then traverse when you got back up top it would pull them back out and that was basically just because um, the well there, I, I used an array to handle that and I wasn't clearing the array to put it simple so anyway another uh, complaint I received was one related uh, to the arm locking. It was most visible on the UE4, but I noticed that a lot of the other ones were doing it too, uh, to some extent or another. And I probably just overlooked it whenever I was uh, redoing a lot of those laying set in, uh, settings. But yeah, uh, so I think sometimes whenever you turn, it, his hand might come uh, a bit off of the, yeah, like right there. Um, so you can actually, let me see. Yeah, so the moving ready, that's because I have a an upper body secondary motion local space weight of 0.3, and that does have an effect. Also, this is only uh, 0 .2, uh, 0.25 on the spine and overlay, which makes it stiffer. Uh, so anyway, it's, uh, it's mostly because of this right here. So the 0.3 is, uh, is a, a bit high and that's in local space. Even if it were in mesh space, it would still cause that problem ever so slightly. So if you want, you can turn that down. Uh, it depends on your needs. So I just, I think it looks far more dynamic with that extra upper body layering there. And I don't really see the uh i don't really see that being a problem it doesn't really come off much also i've improved it so that the uh, startup looks better and more natural so yeah that's the breakdown on the main things that you're going to notice right off the bat but let me go ahead and get into some of the other stuff so if you go into the project settings and the gameplay tags, and you don't have to use these gameplay tags, guys, uh, you should be aware that uh, you can add them from right inside of here. And you can store them on the default gameplay tags.ini file. You don't have to store them in the tables. I just like doing that for portability myself. That's just a personal preference. In fact, it might be better if you don't do that in your project, because if I ever update these again, then, and you added stuff to it, then it, you might lose it. So um, you can make your own gameplay tag tables as well if you want by duplicating these and then removing the ones you don't need uh, in your second one. But yeah, so anyway, yeah, these are all right here. I split that one up into, into four. So there was one and I split it up into four. The ones that are new are in the slot actors and these are for uh, handling slots, uh, slot actors, slot management. So if you go over into the slot manager, you'll see that if I just add one in here, or actually let me just show you from the character because that's where you're gonna be handling that from. So over here in the character, we can see that our item slots were 
comparing things now based off of allowed slot gameplay tag. We're no longer comparing them by class because people found that confusing. And it probably makes more sense for me to use gameplay tags since I'm kind of using them everywhere else anyway. So that's what I did. Uh, these are very specific holsters, but maybe you would just have a holster for all your pistols. Uh, but in some cases, you might have some holsters that uh, are only for specific uh, a specific class of pistol, and uh, maybe s some of them aren't. And so that's why you would want to have separate ones. If I come over here into this BP slot hip pistol M9, you'll see that we have an accepted slot tag, and we're using item data now too. So you can actually pull the gameplay tag off the uh, item data of the slot and I'll, I guess I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. If I can, I've got too many windows open here. So let's see. So you can do it just like, like I'm doing it for the uh, items, like the weapons and stuff. You would do the same thing because this uh, is actually stored on the held objects master, which is the master parent of all of those other items. So they have these two, and that's actually grabbing this right here, and it's grabbing this item data, item ID, and then you can grab the gameplay tag off of it. And that leads me to this. So I've, I've I fixed a bug in the uh, cycling system right here. Uh, there was one person that uh, mentioned a an error they were getting when stopping, and that was caused whenever this didn't have anything in it, and it was calling this off of it anyway, but it didn't exist. So this fixes it. It prevents that error from ever happening. You'll see I have some iter iterative uh, slot actor drop functions right under here. And these allow you to find them by class or uh, by reference in this case, uh, not class, but by reference or by gameplay tag. The gameplay tag one allows you to also filter by hand preference, in, but you don't have to. If you just leave it as either hand, it will just uh, be true. So yeah. So anyway, I say I don't recommend it, but it's it's there's not that many item slots. Your character probably isn't going to have that many, and so it's actually not going to. And these are one-off fires, so I won't be too worried about performance hits with them because they're just one-offs and the arrays are very short. You can also search by the slot socket name, and that would be if you come over here. Actually, let me just show you from here. If you come over here, that would be the socket name, hip R, hip underscore R, for example. But you may have more than one thing under hip underscore R. Probably not, but I mean, who knows? So... So yeah, so we're basing off of this, basing this off of uh, gameplay tags now. So back over here, yeah, you'll see that we have some find filters here. This one's just for holstering. These ones are actually for the slot actors themselves. And you can find them by socket name or by gameplay, ta uh, gameplay tag. And that's the allowed slot gameplay tag. And you can also do it by reference. But I also have one more here that allows you to uh, find them, find all the slots with these with this gameplay allowed slot gameplay tag, and it will return to you an array of those item slot configurations. So that you might find a use case for that. 
because it would uh, be storing all this information for you. The slot actor reference, the allowed slot gameplay tag, and all that other stuff. All right, so anyway, moving on, let's see. So this is an example setup of how you can drop the slot actors. And here's the other ones right here that you might use in different situations or scenarios. But I just set it up with this one for zero, and that's just going to be the right hip uh, pistol, like I showed you before. So, at least I believe I did. I don't know. I'm kind of zoning out. Uh, I've done this video over uh, several times over now. So, let's see. <clears throat> I believe I showed you this, but maybe I didn't. Uh, maybe I haven't showed you in this video yet. So, let me go over here. If we go to the... Uh, pick up category, when we go to pick up held objects, you'll see that the logic that was after this is valid. That's inside of here now. And then we are using the assign slot actor function, which is also used by the setup starting slot actors right here. Also, you have the setup starting items as well. If you want to come in here and look at that. All right, let's see. Find slot by item tag. So if we go over here to find slot actor holstering, that's where the find slot by item tag is. This is only for when you're holstering an item. And so you want to make sure that the that you're passing in the item tag. And that's from the, uh, that's this tag right here. Under the item ID of your actual weapon, not the slot. Yes, yeah, so I explained that to you. Did I show it to you though? I don't remember. I don't think I did. So, okay, so under here, under the traversal category, you'll see two overridden functions. If you see that arrow, that arrow means this is a, a, a function that exists on the parent and we are overriding it. Same with the setup input. And those were on the original. I did not change anything on the original CBP sandbox character. Those are just overridden functions, functions that were available for me to override. And so in here, if he's, un if he's unarmed, we will try to, we'll call the try holster item. It'll give us the results of this. And the result will be not found, item dropped, or item holstered. It'll be one of those. Whenever the traversal is done, if both uh, of those are equal to item holstered, then we'll call this one and then we'll clear it. The, clear, the act of clearing is what I left out before and it's what caused that bug. So that's what I fixed. So this right here, it'll try to uh, draw both of those, but the act of calling this twice, even if it doesn't exist, isn't going to cause any kind of real performance hit because it's just going to not do anything if it's not valid. So it's safe. And yeah, so I, I pointed out that other issue to you with uh, the arm. So that's all fixed. Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or on the Discord, and I'll see you in the next video.